Hi everyone, I'm Carla. And I'm Lanes. And together, we're the After Deck. We chat about the latest Below Deck episodes each week. Let's dive in, Lanes. Can't wait. Recording in progress. Cheers! 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 How are you, mate? I'm all right. I'm a bit, I'm a wee bit rough, but you know, nothing new there. So, you know, just the best way to cure it. The best way to cure it. Exactly. But so am I, Kyle. I'm a bit rough too. Yeah? Yep. Did you guys go up to what you do last night? What you been up to? Well, I just went over to a friend's place because her husband's away. So that's always a good thing, isn't it? Well, hell yeah. Catch up with friends. That's what you want. But it was fairly mild, I think, compared to a night with you. We, it was just two bottles of wine and two vodkas. That's still pretty wide. Two bottles of wine each. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you thought it was each, good, though. though. A bottle of wine would get me going. So two bottles of wine. Yeah, you are, are underway. Yeah. Yeah, we're underway. We're well, underway. We're heading out after this for a igloo and flaming cocktail experience. Oh, nice. That so we'll, sick. we'll be feeling. Where's that? Where are you again? Where are you? Brisbane. 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 You've not been to Brisbane, have you? I have been in Brisbane, yeah. I spent two weeks in Brisbane. Did you? I did, yeah. Where'd you go? I was only passing through. I, no, I was. We were staying at a friend's. It was like a friend in the suburbs. Uh, we were passing through on our way up to. That was us on our way at Early Beach. Yep. I ended up pulling up in Early Beach for a while, but yeah, that was on my on my way through. Yeah, we pulled we pulled up in Brisbane. I like Brisbane actually. I wish I could have spent more time there, but yeah, we like Brizzy too. Everyone goes to Sydney or Melbourne, and they don't really come to Brisbane, but. It's like a big country town is how we describe yeah, it. Yeah, that's like exactly how I felt about pretty it Pretty relaxed. Well. Yeah, exactly how it felt. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you've been here. We were just saying that if you came back and we went out with you for a night that we would probably wind up dead. Yeah, I'd be dead. <laughs> You'd be dead. I don't know about dead, but maybe hospitalised, maybe arrested, something like that. Yeah, but we're old, so that could e- e- end up in death. And we're, we're old, but we like to think we can keep up. Easily led, I would say. I'm sure you girls would give me a run for my money. I'm pretty <laughs> sure of it. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, next time you're in Australia, just let us know and we'll... Uh... Yeah, I'll hit you up. I'll let you know. Could be sooner. Could be sooner than later, actually. Oh, fun. Yeah. So you're in Montana now? Still in Montana, yeah. I head back to Scotland on Thursday, actually. I've been here since March. Yeah, finally kind of getting a social circle and that. It's a bit weird, actually. It's a bit bittersweet because I've kind of finally, you know, finally met people and, you know enjoying it and i'm kind of boosting but i'll definitely be back at some point this year but yeah i've definitely i'm that's my that's my six months up so back to back to scotland back to edinburgh nice do you know what i really wanted to ask you about first go on it was i want to know what's the relevance of the monkey on the unicorn oh well i've been saying so i think i've said that for about eight years i've been talking about it for eight years saying I've always said, I'm just, my next tattoo, it's going to be a really stoned monkey riding on the back of a unicorn. (laughs) And the significance, the significance of the monkey is I've always, like this is before I can remember, I've always told people that my only life ambition is to own a pet monkey. Okay. I know that sounds like a really terrible life ambition, but you know, it's not just like have a pet monkey. Like I'd need to be situated somewhere, you know, you need to have facilities for the monkey. So there's more (laughs) into it than that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And then... The unicorn, well, the, the Scottish national animal is the unicorn. What? Oh, no. Yeah, it's on the passports. But, yeah, the Scottish, it's on the coat of arms. How? How? It's going to do, like, it's going to do, like, Celtic myth. And, like, it's a signal, it's like a sigil of fucking innocent strength and purity or something. But I always tell people the story that when the British Parliament was making the passport, this is bullshit, but when the British Parliament was making the passports, England came to Scotland and they were like, right, you need to choose an animal that's in your that's in your country. So we we're like, sweet, yeah, we chose a stag. And then they come back and they've got the lion rampant on their fucking passport. And we were like, hang on a fucking minute. Where's the lion rampant in England? So we just did all the little bit and added a, added a horn onto the <laughs> stag and that's where the unicorn comes from. But <laughs> that's a bullshit story, story but... Yeah, there's it's 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 a Celtic it's a Celtic kind of myth and legend that But the, the bullshit that, stories are the best ones. Bullshit's just it's the best one. Fast forward a hundred years, best. everyone will think that that's how it happened. Exactly, yeah. You say it so long it you say it often enough, it becomes truth. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And I've not got that finished. I'll get that finished on Tuesday. I was yeah. wondering I how that was going. 
You want, you want to see the photo, the photo of what it should look like to finish? I'll see if I can do this. I've done two sessions. That's what wow. it looked like to finish. Oh, yeah, that looks amazing. That's hectic. That's a lot. And yeah, that's on your ribs. It sucks on the ribs. It really sucks. Like, But, you know, you signed up for it, so. You need some medicinal mojo before you go get your ribs done. No, I didn't, actually. I, I've actually, considering I'm in Montana, the legality of things here, I did when I, for the first while I was here, I was enjoying the legality of um <laughs> of the flower that grows, but I've, I've kind of I've knocked myself off that a bit. Okay. Definitely knocked myself off that a bit. I was turning into a bit of a hermit, so yeah, I've, mm. I've, I've, I've knocked that on the head. So we'll see. Well, that's, fair enough. That's, I don't know what you're talking about. It's highly illegal here. Yeah, no. Oh, it's still illegal there. Yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. Not, not medicinal. About. Well, it's very much alive. It's very much alive and kicking here. Every second store. I mean, every second store you go here, it's, there's a new dispensary popped up. You can't go around the shop. Seeing them, it's crazy. Yeah, crazy, you crazy. You won't find that here. Did you ever watch that series called Weeds? Yes. How good was yeah. that show? Exactly. Yeah. It's like that. That was a good series. It was great. I didn't watch it because I'm just so pure of heart. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> keep, keep, keep telling that story, girl. Keep telling that story. <laughs> Do you, have you ever listened to our pod, Kyle? Mm. You can say you, no. You can say after, no. After I started, well, after it, the show was airing. My mom put me on to his actually. My mom put me on to all the podcasts and that, yeah. So I did when 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 it, after every episode, yeah, I did. I quite enjoyed sitting and listening through everybody's everybody's verdict on each on each episode, yeah. But I did really love your friendship with Ben. It was great. We loved it. Yeah, I loved Benny. I loved Ben, man. He was he was good. Like it was a good cabin placement, and it was just yeah, we just got on. Oh, like, you two in your cabins? How much like did you ever wear clothes? <laughs> No, nah, but I mean it's my room, right? It's like it's your, it's your, it's sort of, they call it your safe space, right? So I mean, yeah, it's not just, safe with uh, cameras. I mean, we saw more of more asses and pixelation than we have in any other season. Yeah, Bravo done me a favor there, like you know, me a <laughs> mate. Quite a large pixelation. <laughs> It was the one. It was the one when I was in Barbie's room the first yes. time we slept together. And it's like I'm just there, standing to attention, and she like we, I'm like we both genius. gulped. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, holy shit! <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining. I mean, if anything, I'm telling that's my official thank you to whoever happened, to whoever did that. So yeah, double thumbs for me, guys. Thanks, editing. I don't think anyone minded. <laughs> no, no, no. You you got some points there, mate. Hey. On that pixelation, what happened yeah. on the disappearing undies trip? Oh man, it was great. I don't know why. I don't know how or why that never went in, but that was Benny. But yeah, Benny. It kept saying the last group. I can't mind what charter it was that that was on before, but he kept saying for about an hour before in the vans and that he was like, "The last charter guests have got these shorts. They want you and Dylan to put them on and get a photo." And like as I say, Dylan was straight on, but I was. I, there was. I knew someone was up. I didn't quite grasp. I, I mean, I said originally I didn't know that they were disintegrating shorts. I didn't know they were shorts, but I was like, "There's something going on here" because the shorts had like little green nesses on them. Like the Loch Ness monster was all over the shorts. Right. And then when I was getting in the rubber ring, one of the kind of behind the scenes guys was like, "Oh no, 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 Kyle, you get in that one." And it was one with a GoPro on it. So I was like, oh. "Right, there's fucking something going on this here." Yeah, yeah, got in and. Yeah, got in and like halfway down the river, it was just literally like I, I, I got in the thing and I was like, why, why am I so cold there? And I just looked <laughs> yeah. down and it was just like, it was honestly like I pulled about fucking 50 pieces of just shorts away, <laughs> launched them at bed and I was like, oh yeah, I mean, he got me good. So I was just, yeah, floating down, floating love, down in a rubber ring naked. I love so much. <laughs> Dylan had the one as well, yeah. I mean, Dylan took it all right. He didn't take it as as well. He, he, I mean, I was half cut that day, to be fair. It was our day off. Me in Paris, I woke up and we were on Bloody Mary's and Mimosas first thing in the morning. So, I mean, I was, I mean, yeah, I was rolling by the midday that day. It was a good day. We love Paris too. Yeah, I love Paris as well. Yeah, she's good crack. Good value. Funnily enough, Paris, so Par- my good friend Georgia, good, good friend of mine, I was just up in Vancouver with her. She actually knows Paris as well. They met, I think, in in Greece in Eos. So it was a weird. That was a weird connection. Wow. We're, we're both mates. Yeah, it's a funny. It's a small world, there. But and Paris also George knows Paris. Natalia. Natalia. I mean, yeah, I don't know Natalia together. Unfortunately, would love to know Natalia. Okay. Yeah. She <laughs> reminds me of that of Alexand- is Alexandra. Is da- Alexandra da- Dadario? Dadario. Yes. She's got the eyes, the beautiful eyes that are like yeah. yeah. She's, she's okay, a, Carl. Calm girl. down. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> That, you don't, don't edit that out, by the way. 
it'll be in and we'll tag her. We Aussies got to stick together, as in Natalia, <laughs> Paris and us. And yeah, Benny. Love that, love that. Huh? And Ben. And Ben, of course, Benny. Benny's with Sonny now in, in Canada, right? Yeah. They're going well, apparently. They seem, yeah, they seem to be doing well. They've lasted the distance. We well, we yeah, predicted I mean, it. We knew. You, yeah. you, co- you saw it. You saw the photo, and you were like, "That's Sunny." I was like, "That's Sunny." And yeah. I saw a photo ah, of Sunny our, yes, in yeah. Uh, yeah. the Gold Coast um, back in January, yeah. way back. And I was like, "Sunny's in the Gold Coast. They're still together." I'm like, "I'm getting too obsessed with this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too invested. <laughs> I need a report." <laughs> It's good though, Benny. They seem they seem good, and I love Benny. Benny's got a real good eye, I reckon, with the camera and the photography shit. I think he's he's real good with that. So, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, think so a, too. She's a good, she's a good model to have for that. Oh, she is. She's absolutely stunning. So, I thought that you were pretty natural in front of the camera. Is it tricky to kind of forget that they're there? Because when you see well, the shots with the cameras in it, there there's so many. There's crew. There's the cameras. There's all the stuff. I would find that difficult to do my job. And that being in your face. But everyone seems to kind of be themselves around it. Do you find that with everyone? Do you want to know what we talk about after each episode? Well, come on over to the Patreon because there you can get early ad-free episodes plus our bonus weekly wrap-up show. We love our Patreon community. Click the link in the show notes and come and join us. See you there. For me, walking on first time, like for the first, like I would say for the first good kind of week, week and a half, Mm -hmm. I was walking around just going, what the fuck is going on here, guys? Because A, it's like the filming's new and B, like I had no idea how to do the job, right? I was like green as you'll get. So like I, I was just, it was quite intimidating. But then like they're, I mean, a lot of the. I mean, they've done what thirty one, thirty, however many seasons of the show. There's definitely been thirty seasons, right? And a lot of these guys have been on it for since the beginning, almost, right? So, I mean, they're naturally they're just they just do blend in the background. They're really good. Like you're obviously not allowed to talk to anyone, yeah. But like you know, there's you can communicate in kind of other ways, and you know, there's a <laughs> sly giggle here and that. So it's like they're you can see that they're having fun as well. So it's like it almost puts you in a comfort where it's like, oh, they're just here fucking working as well, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let's not be frictious about it or anything like that. Like, so it's as I say, for the first kind of, I would say for the first two weeks, like, and I'm surprised they never used any of that footage. But the amount of times I would just blurt out, "What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> like, what are we doing?" Uh, What's happening? What like what do you want from here? So it's like yeah, I mean it's 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 definitely confronting. But as I say, you signed up for it as well, right? So it's like balls to the wall. You're just once you're in it, you're in it. How do you sign up for it? Like, did you get like found, or did you just apply? Had you had any yachting experience? I'd had no yachting experience. I'd worked in Australia in Early Beach for um, Cruise with Sundays, so I worked for them as a porter when they had the Daydream and the Hamilton Island mm. contract. And then as I was working with them, they got the contract for Hayman Island. And I was one of the first ones to go as a porter to work with Hayman Island. So that was that was really like, that was I learned a bit more working under the Hayman contract than I did with the Daydream contract because the Hayman boat was like, it was a five-star service mm. boat, right? Whereas the Daydream yeah. one, it was just kind of sailing like passenger cats going back and forward. Whereas Hayman, it was like, we were greeting these guests off the plane getting their bags on the boat, getting on the boat with them, champagne, going to the island, delivering their bags to the room, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, it was that was a, a bit of experience there. It's an elevated um, island, Kyle. Heyman v. Daydream. I, Heyman v? Heyman versus elevated. Daydream. Heyman is oh, yeah. a better island. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. A good story about that. I met, who did I meet? I met Hamish and Andy. Oh, did I did that there. Yeah. I what, were they guests? for a bit. Yeah, they came through to him, and, yeah. and then guys. also, I, I I wasn't there at the time, but one of the guys told me the Red Hot Chili Peppers rocked up the island, and they came, they boarded, blah blah blah. It was quite secret, private, and they came down to one of the restaurants, and the restaurant's a black tie restaurant, and they came down just in jeans and shirts. So the the maitre d' or whatever the restaurant was like, guys, sorry, you're going to have to go and change. It's a black tie event. So they went upstairs, and they came down wearing nothing but black ties, stark bollock naked and they got kicked off the island where they got kicked <laughs> off and that was it. 
That's I a love great that story. story. That's a fucking brilliant <laughs> story. And I can just imagine Anthony Keaton just being like, right, fuck you, then I'm going to get my black tie on. I- I'm coming down like this and well. That was their time on the island. And I thought you were going to say with a black tie tied around their penis. Well, that would have maybe been the been the go as well. But remember the sock yeah, I concert. Love that story. The Do you remember the Red Hot Chili Peppers where they wore socks on their penis? I don't know. I don't. I don't. You might be I'm too young. Have to watch you it. lot. Yeah. <laughs> they came, all came on stage naked, and all they had was socks on their penises. Socks. Yep, that was it. <laughs> oh, it's class. <laughs> But yeah, on applying to the show, I had applied for Squid Game the Challenge. Um, what really? Just it was, yeah, that was that. Because I'm no, I'm no bit like it's funny. I'm more comfortable doing this now. But if it like I, I was not, I wasn't comfortable in front of a camera to begin with. Yeah. And I was pissed up with my mate Elon in Aberdeen, and we were just we were pissed in the hotel. We'd caught up after a while. I'd met her when I was in uh, Queenstown, and she was in Scotland. Funnily enough, so we were just pissed up, and she was like, "Right, put a video, Squid Game." And then our mate had messaged her about the below deck thing. So I just used the video I'd used for Squid Game and just sent that. Like there was a whole page of stuff like you to fill in like your work experience. I didn't fucking fill in nothing. I just sent the like a minute and a half video and was like it was a throwaway, like drunken whatever. And yeah, like three months later, I got I got a random WhatsApp message for a fella. And I was like, this is fucking weird. I was like at work, I was like, there's something going on here. And then again, three days later, I was pissed up and I was like, ah, fuck it. I'll give this guy a phone, phoned him. And I guess because I had a bit of Dutch courage in me, he was like, this guy's class. And then, yeah, six months later, I was just, it just happened naturally. Like, I obviously did apply, but it was a very, a very, like, it wasn't like, I wasn't actively trying to get on. It was just. That's it. That's so funny. Cause I was like, I said to Carla before we spoke and we've thought about this for a while, like, how, how do they cast? And so I was like, do they just have a pool of hot people that have some boating experience and they're like, we'll have this hot person for this season, we'll have this hot person for that season because <laughs> it's just like you're just all there and it didn't look like you were green at all, Kyle. Like your experience, I, I we knew that you didn't have the experience because it was said, yeah. but you picked it up so quickly. Well, I, I think the reason I picked it up so quickly is because, I, I mean, I've been traveling for like 10 years, right? So, I mean, the amount of jobs I've had over the 10 years, it's like, it's quite a natural thing for me to go into a new job and look comfortable and feel, you know what I mean? Because it's like, I'm just, I'm that used to chopping and changing. Mm. So to me, it was more like, I mean, as much as it was, I love being on the water, right? So I didn't really see it as working on a yacht, so to speak. Mm. I've kind of seen it more as like, right, we're taking over a restaurant here. And what you do in a restaurant is you're managing the floor, right? As soon as somebody walks on that boat, they're on in that door. They're your guest, right? So you're looking after them. So you're looking after the floor, keeping it tight. So, I mean, that's how I mm. kind of related it in my head. And I guess that's kind of why I, I kind of came across like I, I kind of knew what I was doing, I guess. Well, you just adapt. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you pick up things and you just, I mean, I get, I mean, for speaking, for now knowing the industry as well, I've heard that yachting's far better. They like people with more life experience than an 18 year old kid right at school, right? Because your yeah. skills are transferable. You know what I mean? It's like, because it is a very kind of on the fly. You just kind of, yeah, some, a lot of it's just make it up as you go along, right? Everybody's just kind of, doing what they can to the best of their ability so i mean yeah i guess my i guess my travel life experience really kind of worked in my favor for for kind of coming across like i knew, knew what i was doing well it did you did look like you knew what you were doing and ben Thank seems to be that. that's all good ben seems to be um a leader that likes to teach and encourage people to learn more things is that how you found it like did you learn a lot from yeah him? I, I learned a lot from Ben. yeah i definitely did um Really, really, I still love Ben. I think he's a great lad. The only thing with Betty was, which was why I could see the bit of friction between him and Cap. Ben had a real strong desire to kind of almost change the yachting industry, mm. you know, the hierarchy and, you know, like a real, which I can see because I was in the fire service as well, right? I can see that kind of friction where it's that kind of, that boys club where you fucking, I say jump, mm. you see how high. So I can understand how that kind of old world idea of following people isn't the most sought after. But I mean, as I said, don't want to talk bad on Ben, but he did have a bit of a chip on his shoulder mm-hmm. about trying to change it. You know what I mean? It was like that friction of like, I know better sort of thing. But she didn't come across that to me, but I can see from yeah. where he's, he's kind of people above him. It's like, it's not the best. It it kind of reminds me of Captain Sandy in a way because I'm like, she would have experienced that being um, a female. 
Yeah. In a similar kind of, and then you got to wait till you're in that position to then be able to change it. You can't change it from a lower. Yeah, you can't change. Yeah, it comes from the top down, like anything, of course. Exactly. You've got to start from the top, of course. Yeah, you got to make your way up before you start. Shit like that. So not saying anything bad about that. No, no, no. I feel bad, but you know what I mean. Like I don't. No, but we did see that Kyle on the show. We did. We did have a little bit of chip on his shoulder in that sense. Like we love Keza. What was it like working yeah. for him, not knowing him? Like, oh, my God, okay, so we've got the new captain, don't know what he's going to be like. Was he what you expected? Did you watch Adventure to see what he was like or what? For me, I had, I'd never seen the show. I'd, I'd watched six episodes of season 10 before I walked on the boat. <laughs> so I went on, like, I've seen it all now, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm now I'm, I'm a, I'm You're a bravo time. guy now, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm in it now. Seen it all, but... Yeah, walking on, it was like, I think that maybe worked in my favour because I did just go in, you know, totally blind mm. and it was just a whole new experience for me. So, um, you know, I, I really like working under Kerry. I think he's a he's a great leader and he's a great um, kind of advocate for kind of mental health. And, yeah. you know, in the modern world that we're in, he's a, I think he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a modern boss. Like what we're saying, like about, you know, previously it might have been a, a kind of boys club. I think yeah. he's probably one of the, the guys that's maybe changing the industry and the way that he, that he deals with his staff and just the way that he generally deals with things. He's got a very, very calm, level head about him. So, yeah, I've got none but good things to say about Kerry. Do you ever look at a cushion and think about the zip? <laughs> yeah, I do now, actually. <laughs> I mean, but then I've, I've worked in private house. I've worked in two or three private houses, so that's kind of natural for me. It's, it's definitely a thing. We saw a little bit of argy bargy with Ben and Kerry, and I'm I'm sure that you can't really speak much of this, but when the cleaning of the cabin happened on the show, it looked like you were no, I mean no one wants to clean the cabin, but like oh. you were willing to do it. It looks like Ben had kind of persuaded you to be like, "Fuck it, we're not going to do that because fuck him, we're busy." Kinda. I mean, we were. Clo- I was close to doing it, but then also the day did take head as well right I mean as much as we probably we could have found time without a doubt but Ben was like nah we're not doing it Mm. and I'm like well I was working hard that day as well we had a big day because that was the day that that Sarah Clark she was there doing the yoga with the guys up top so that was a big run that was a huge run to go and pick her up and drop her off yep um and then it just everyone compounded that day because then it was just Sonny and Dylan on top and he was already pissed off that they'd not cleared the sun deck mm. while they're dead. It was just, it was just, you know, those days where just nothing goes right. It yep. was just one of them and it just kind of toppled down. So, but we should have done it. Like we should have tidied it. But yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm not dropping Ben in it. But yeah, Ben was a definite hard no on doing it. I'll so, drop Ben in it. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was a no. I wanted to do it. <laughs> but he was like, nah, we're not doing it. So yeah, I mean, that's a lesson learned from, from me. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, not, don't listen I'll to not, a not cheeky Aussie again. Yeah, <laughs> I do want to know that time that you had the arse brand. Oh, fuck yeah! Yep. Can you tell us how you actually got it, and ah, then so- Lanes will tell you about how she got the <laughs> biggest hematoma. It's bigger than your oh. scar on her ass. Mm. If you want to know, I'll show you a photo sure. too if you want. Yeah, I'll see a photo. Did I put, have you seen the photo of the scar? I've seen the sure photo, the photo but yeah. we don't know how it happened. So we'd been. Uh, it was in Canada. I was in Whistler. It's like a. It's like a bigger Queenstown. I don't know if you ever been, but it's like a just. It's just a whole load of young people mingling and moving. So there's a good group of people always partying. So it was like. You know, we'd been going, it was like four o'clock in the morning, somebody's house, we're all sat there just, you know, end of the night, and there's this guy sat at the, sat at the fire with a coat hanger on it, and it looked sinister oh. as fuck. We're all just partying, chatting shit, and this guy's just at the fire. And obviously, we're all pissed up, fucked up. And um, he just took the blue goes, can I brand somebody? And like, me after, I mean, after a few drinks and whatever else, I'm like, fuck it, I'm in, let's go. So, like, it was literally just a spur of the moment. Like, he'd had the coat hanger on the fire for hours and oh I just stood up oh, and sick. and branded. And now the brand wasn't bad. Like, I can, I've got a pretty a high tolerance for pain. I've got a huge tolerance for pain. Was it that that bit? Like the question yeah. mark it bit? Like a, it looked like a Stormtrooper's helmet. If you've seen Star Wars, it looked like a storm. It's kind of faded now, but it looked <sighs> rough. But the problem was... I didn't go, I didn't do any, I, I covered it, but I didn't really do anything about it. And I'd been working in, and I'd been sitting on scaffolding for about three days in the freezing cold. And then we went down to Vancouver to Hilltop Hoods. Hilltop Hoods were playing in oh, Vancouver. Yeah. 
So uh, we were like, we went down and again, seshed for about three days. And on the third day, you know, we slept for like, whatever, 11 hours making up for sleep. And I woke up and my arse was throbbing. And then we got up, tried to dance a bit. And I was like, there's something going on. And I pulled my pants down, my, my mate Maxie. And he was like, shit, lad, that's bad. I mean, it was it was severely like infected. infected. So yeah, it was a it was just a young man being silly and not looking after himself and partying. And it just, you know, I mean, the brand just turned into an infection and it just, yeah. Have you still got a scar? I don't know. You know. Give, <laughs> give us a give us a look, eh? <laughs> Oi, come on. Jesus. Oh, here we go. Are we gonna oh Oh, little one. Yeah, little one. Yeah, well, you've you've got a scar still. It's there. There's a dodgier tattoo on the other on the other cheek. But we just saw uh, Kyle's ass without pixelation. <laughs> and... Yeah, we well we saw that on the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can pixel that out. You can pixel that out. Oh, we don't know. No, We're not. good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so do you want to see the bruise? You do. Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I showed me mine. You show me yours. Yeah. <laughs> and you tell us if you've ever seen anything quite like it. Oh, Jesus. Where's that on your ass? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck happened there? <laughs> Do you want to tell him? I'll show you a little bit. This is like... Is it a bruise? How did you manage that? We were at my house having a party. I'm old. And um, Lanes was sitting on a chair <laughs> and all of a sudden she wasn't. I just fell off it. It's old lady I problems, Kyle. I need to come to Brisbane and party with you guys. Eh? <laughs> yeah. We call Carla's house... The vortex, because there's she's got oh, I love it. the pool out the back, and she's got like an outdoor kitchen area. It's like a whole thing. So once you get into that area, it you, you get sucked in, and something yeah. happens yeah. there, and then you wake love up that. the next day, and you're still at the house, and you're like, "What yeah. the fuck happened?" And then you might be there oh. for that day as well. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I've been in a few vortex <laughs> houses myself, so yeah, I feel like I'd fit right in. You would, you would. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you sort it out when you're next in um, Oz. We, we'll definitely sort that out and bring your mate Ben. Yeah, Ben, I meet mean, my boys, the boys, boys that I met in Whistler. They're all in Europe at the moment, but they're um, yeah, they're a good group of lads. They're on kind of Sydney and Gold Coast as well. So they would, I mean, the Aussies not a party of all the people in the world I've met. The Aussies <laughs> are the ones that. I'm actually I struggle to keep up with you lot. To be fair, like I always think the Scots can party, but yeah, the Aussies give us a run for our money. Like, I oh, know we're pretty bad. Well, I've got English blood. <laughs> She's got Irish blood, so it's like in us as well. Oh, you much, know, much made in heaven almost. Mm. <laughs> One more, yeah, okay. Yeah, you're the Joe, the, the Joe and Nathan of the party world. <laughs> yes, <laughs> actually, and it's Northern blood too. Yeah, there we go. Do we talk about Dylan? Do we the ham? Oh, what else did Dylan wash other than ham? Oh man. Oh, I loved Dylan's... you in that scene, Kyle. It, you were sitting in the crew mess. Dylan was washing ham, washing it. Oh, geez. and you were looking at him with this face, and I was like, "Yes, Kyle. Like, please <laughs> tell him that he's being a fucking idiot." I tell you the funniest story, right? And he, me, and like we'd we'd call, we'd been calling him up, not rudely, but like he's a puppy. We'd been calling him a puppy all season, right? And um, Ben always goes, oh, how are you going, big horse? Like, big horse, yeah, how are you going, horse? Like, just, it's just like, how are you going, lad? Anyway, Dylan came out one day morning and Benny, as in typical fashion, oh, big horse, how are you going? And he and Dylan goes, oh, I actually identify as a pony. And I've never fucking laughed so much <laughs> in my fucking life. Like, just, it was just one of those, you know what I mean? You're hung over, you're tired. And we'd been calling him a puppy anyway. And the fact that he just pipes up and he's like, I identify as a pony. I was rolling on the ground laughing That's awesome. for about two hours after that. Was he joking or was he serious? I think he was pretty serious. I mean, I don't know <laughs> if it's just his partner, but I think he was pretty fucking serious. Eh? What he's, do you he's... identify as then, Kyle? I identify as a human being, <laughs> a person that walks the earth, yeah. but also a unicorn. I guess I'm a unicorn as well. Our nickname for me, for you on the pod, if we don't call you Kyle, is Eggplant. <laughs> I'll take Eggplant. <laughs> Most people call me Stilly. My name's Kyle. My name's Kyle Stilly. Mm. I've been kind of known all my, not all my life, but a lot of people have always called me Stilly. Silly Stilly is kind of a name that's kind of stuck with me. Do you know what we did one day on our pod? And it might have been our Patreon, which your mum joined for a little while. That was our right. thing about your mum. She joined it's, our Patreon. And I was like, she just what's wants Patreon? to. What's Patreon? It's like OnlyFans, but for, for podcasting. And we don't show gotcha. any bits, but on the Patreon, we do this wrap up show where we talk a bit more about what's been happening on the socials, what we found out, and like we deep dive into like 
what we want to say, but we don't say on the pod. And sometimes we do fun games and things. So one episode, and it was your, you guys, your season, it started with Dylan because we also called him a puppy. And so we gave all the crew members dogs. Like we assigned them to dogs. And then (laughs) on the Patreon, I even made like a... A Google Doc with all your faces yeah. and all the dogs and the Patreons had to guess who was who. Oh, that's pretty fast. I like that. Who what did that? I get? What was that? Was I'm going to have to pull it out and send it to you. I feel like I might have, like, pulled out a Scottish Terrier. Yeah, yeah and I then mean, I was... stuffed Terrier, so that makes sense. I'll yeah. pick a Terrier. I think that that's what I did terrier. for you. But I was confused about that, wasn't I? Or I was know. it the Paris one? Because you had, like, a Whippet. A whippet was Fraser. Whippet was Fraser. I mean, how yeah, could Fraser yeah. not be a whippet? Yeah. Fast that, that and thin. Yeah. We had Ben as a Labrador, didn't we? This is the good story. Anyway, Kyle. and you know what? I'm just going to send you the document and you can sure, figure send it out. It, yeah. 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 Hell yeah. Send it across. <laughs> All right. Back on track. What's in store for you for the next 12 months? Um, so I go to Scotland for four days and then I'm flying to Europe. Go to Europe for a bit and then, well, it's only a week and a half and then back to. I've got my hometown on the 5th of August and last year when we finished filming I went and I worked with my best mate for well one of my best mates for growing up he's got a big job on for the month of August uh, so I'm going to go work with him for a month and then that takes me to uh, the first trip to LA so then I'll be back to LA on the 5th of September Mm. and then I've hopefully got my PB2 my driving license set up in Miami to drive boats thinking forward because I would love to go back this is me trying to be proactive yes. for them invite me back Good. so I'm going to do go do my PB2 get that, get that license done then uh, that's September and then I'm debating whether I stay again in Montana or go back I think it's more likely that I'm going to go back to Scotland and potentially continue work for another month with my boy Ben and or pull up in Edinburgh to about mid-October back to LA um, which then I'm going to go back up to Vancouver and then I think from October I'll be back in Missoula. I think I'll be back here. That's kind of the plan because then that'll be my re-entry. So that's ideally is kind of the plan until February. And then, yeah, other than that, I mean, I've always I've always been a bit of a kind of just wanderer, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's as much as it's funny being a traveler, right? Because it's like I get settled in a place and then I always get this kind of want and cabin fever to kind of move elsewhere which is kind of I'm I'm working on it because it kind of messes with me sometimes you know what I mean like I'm I'm doing fine but like I sometimes sit and I'm like fuck what's the next thing what am I gonna do blah 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 so it's um yeah but I mean what I've just told you might not be what I end up doing as well you know what I mean I'm no I've all I've no much I'm not much of a planner so yeah that's kind of a brief a brief outline of kind of what the plan is but yeah as I say if 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 opportunity comes up or things arise I'm not I'm partial to just go right fuck it what are we doing so yeah I'm kind of an open book at the moment but um you know I'd love to maybe eventually just fucking do podcasts and chat shit for a living you know what I mean like that would be a great so yeah I mean yeah I'm an open book as I say as much as I've just said my plan I could fucking be anywhere I could it's be fluid. in I could be back in Australia I could be in Australia then well yeah, get under, ready you know? for a bruise mate <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah I can't yeah as much as I just rambled on there and said what I'm doing I've got no fucking clue no, what I'm doing but girls. also two things first of all it sounds really fucking hard I wish that was my 12 month yeah. plan and secondly <laughs> it's an opportunity so of course yeah. you take it you know see where it, yeah. see where it floats you is that a yeah. phrase? No, you're really not shit good at phrases. phrases. You're a float, you know, no, no, yeah, it's a phrase. You just coined a phrase. That'll work. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really you love back, watching Carl. you on Below Deck, Carl. You were, we often said how sensitive you were to Barbie's feelings. Barbie had been messaging us and DMing us throughout that season as well. Um, yeah. I think we were one of the few that she didn't block, so yay us. Um, but she, <laughs> I did really enjoy how emotionally intelligent you were with her. Um, Mm. So I don't know if anyone else has been saying that to you, but we really enjoyed us watching you with her because we thought that you were a good balance for her. Nice, good, love that. I appreciate that. Mm. I think I was as well, yeah. I mean, I was raised by a woman, right? Paula raised me. I mean, my stepdad definitely came in, but obviously it would be the stepdad that I definitely took more of a lead from Bob. So, yeah, I was definitely raised by a woman, so I've definitely got a a, a feminine side to me that I can understand that side of the world it's it nice really to watch nice and to it's watch. nice to watch on a franchise like below deck where often we get just the macho dick bullshit so yeah we appreciated that 
Love that, ladies. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. You're welcome. One last question before we've got a little game for you. We've got two games for you, Yeah, Oh, I love that. Well, Lanes would like to ask this question because it's... Something I do quite often. Mm. And it's something that I do in bed. Yeah. Wow, okay. I didn't know that's where this was going, (laughs) but yeah, there we go. Yeah, strap yourself (laughs) in, mate. Um, I love doing this when I wake up. It's only on the weekends I do this. Because I don't have much time through the week. I think I'm blushing. Right. Wow. Yeah. Fuck, I'm blushing. <laughs> Jesus. It's not what you think. No. Um, so I love to herkle dirkle. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 You know what yeah, I'm talking I like, about? Yeah, I like a herkle dirkle. Yeah, I yeah, know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was like, I love it. I, that's my favourite thing to do. And for those who don't know it, it's a Scottish term where you wake up and you, you don't get out of bed when you know you should be out of bed. You just stay in bed and laze about for a bit. I'm a herkle yeah, dirkle. You just fester. You just fester in bed. Yeah, yeah I love a, a fester. The weekends, I like what you mean as well. The weekends is the time for doing it as well, right? Yeah, I can't through the week. I've got two boys and I've got to get them up to school and they're teenagers and it's hard, Kyle. I didn't grow up knowing that phrase. That's only something I learned recently. That's not something that I've known about. But yeah, herkle dirkling is definitely a Scottish term of phrase for festering in bed. It's so one of speak. my favourite things to fester. All right, you two with your festering. <laughs> Let's go to the game. All right, yeah, you yeah, ready? Can you game? guess what game it is? Pre- okay. Pretty common. Fuck, marry, kill. Yeah, okay, I'm in. Fuck, marry, kill. Yeah, yeah, love it. Fraser, Paris, Zandy. Oh, fuck, that's a tough one. Yeah. Fuck, We're not here to fuck kill. spiders. <laughs> We're not here to fuck spiders. Um... <laughs> Oh, that's a toughie. Jesus. Okay, so I'm going to marry Zandy. Aww. Just because I feel like she'd be a good wife. She'd yes, be a lovely same. wife. She's, yeah, she's, that's definitely her game. She needs a, she needs a, a stable man for thing. And then oh. I'm going to fuck Fraser and I'm going to kill Paris. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we were hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for the next one? It's going to be even. It gets yeah, harder. Go, Carla. Okay. Ben, Barbie, or Keza? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Ben, Barbie, Keza. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going to go with this, and I'm nervous. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I'm going to marry Kerry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's solid. I'm going to fuck Barbie, and I'm going to kill Betty. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Betty. Okay, now we're going to go non-crew members. I'm sure you know these people. They're famous people. Margot Robbie? Yeah, gotcha. She played Barbie. Yeah, 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 yeah. We love Margot Robbie. Ewan McGregor? Yeah. Rihanna? Oh, I'm going to fuck Rihanna. Yeah. I'm going to kill Ewan McGregor. Yes. And I'm going to marry Margot Robbie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's where we're at. I love it, Kyle. We've got one more game. Do you have time? <laughs> yeah, loads of time. I want to say all the time in the world, yeah. This is called This or That. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Simple. Okay, ready? Rum or whiskey? Whiskey. Beach or mountains? Oh, beach. Yeah, I thought I that would be a tricky tanda. one for you. I love the like. I love snowboarding. I love being in the cold, but that you feel good when you've got a tan on your. I mean, I've got. I'm, I've been sitting in the sun for the past week. So yeah, now beach, beach, beach. Well, it's winter here in Brisbane, and we're so cold at 24 degrees Celsius. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rub it in. <laughs> Look, yeah, we've yeah, got yeah. jumpers on. We can't cope. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is. To be fair, it's it was it hit 39 degrees here in Missoula. Today. Ooh, Holy so. shit! Yeah. All right. You can wear yeah. a singlet. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Cigarettes or cigars? Cigarettes. There's three choices here. Below deck OG, below deck med, or below deck down under. Oh, gee, come on. Oh. I've got to stay true. Come on. (laughs) Okay, next one. Men or women? Women. Every time. Big spoon, little spoon? Big spoon. And the very last one, haggis or black pudding? Haggis. I guess. I guess. Love them both, I... but Haggis takes the, takes the biscuit. Haggis wins. I have not eaten either of those things, and I don't think that I will. I understand the, the disgustingness of it, but once you try it, it's nice, especially mm. if you get it nice in Scotland. Like, black pudding's here nor there. It's like, meh. But, like, if you get a nice Haggis, you'll you'll definitely be changed. You'll change your mind if you get a nice Haggis. Right. Go and visit my mum. 
up and Colin and get her to make you a breakfast with haggis in it. Och, I the new. What? Och, I the new. See, he knows. What? what? Oh, okay, the new. Okay, the new. How do you, why did I, why, this I wasn't, this wasn't friends. in our preference sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw that out the end, it came to me. <laughs> well, this wasn't discussed. No, I know. <laughs> All right, Carl, thank you so much for chatting to us. Have a great night. I'm sure thank you will. You. Yeah, let's keep in touch as well. I'll let you know my movements, let you know my plans change and whatnot, and um, yeah, maybe we'll speak again in it. I'd love that, Kyle, and also the uh, the invitation is always open to Carla's Vortex. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I'll come get sucked in. I'll definitely yeah. come get sucked in. Get a couple vortex. of bruises on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fun talking to you, Kyle. Love it. Yeah, you girls too. Take care of yourselves. Huh? Bye. See you, mate. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. If you'd like to follow us on Insta, come over to theafdeck.pod. Or send us an email on theafdeckpod at gmail.com. We'd love to know what you think about the show and what you'd like us to cover for upcoming seasons. 